In today's show, we're looking at players who might be buy low candidates for fantasy basketball leagues. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore Beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Now I know that some leagues trade deadlines have passed, but I'd say about half of the leagues um, haven't. So we're going to do buy lows and sell highs for at least one more week. Then I'll have to find something else to do in these mini shows. But let's talk buy lows today and uh, and get cracking and start with category leagues as some guys who over the last week have been performing at a bit of a lower level and we'll start with Smoke and Joe Harris who he's the 110th ranked player for the season his last three games have not been particularly impressive just 22 minutes a night across those games now one of those was that game against the Jazz where they got blown out and he played five five minutes but even the game after that uh, against the Pistons, he had nine points in 29 minutes. Now, of course, those numbers are skewed by that one game, but not everyone will remember that. Just remember that. When you when people are looking at rankings or player raiders and, oh, this guy's ranked this on Yahoo, or this guy's player raider on ESPN says this, or this guy's ranking on Basketball Monster says this, <clears throat> they won't, won't always dig into the reasons why. And when you see that Joe Harris is the 309th ranked player over the last week, or they look at their totals for last week and go, Joe Harris killed me. Look what he did. Nothing. Um, maybe there's some value to be extracted. He only shot 39% from the field. He still hit his customary 50% from three, but couldn't hit any twos. He had no steals or blocks. He had three rebounds in three games, and he scored under nine points per game. Now, I'm not saying that he's a great option. He's great, you know, seven, top 70 type player as we move forward. I think he might be a top 130 sort of guy. In fact, over the last month, he's been the 151st ranked player. That's not particularly good. But when we're looking at those three-point stream options, like a him, a Boyan Bogdanovich, a Duncan Robinson, Danilo Gallinari, Davis Bertans, I think Harris is the most secure, the most or the best efficiency guy out of that group. And he's going to have that value at the back end of your roster. So now, with a little bit of a slump happening, people worrying about Kevin Durant returning, Aldridge and Griffin, all those sort of things. Is he going to lose shots? Which is all a distinct possibility. But there is an opportunity, I think, to get him a bit at a bit of a lower price. Let's go on to the next guy. It is Benny Simmons, who is the 224th ranked player over the last week. But let's even go a little bit further back than that, 113th over the last month. It's been a disappointment from Simmons this season. He has, in his career, been the 30th, 39th, and 24th ranked player. He's 52nd this year. Why is he so low? Well, the scoring has dropped down to career low levels. The efficiency from the field has dropped as well to career low levels. His assist numbers are at, guess what, career low levels. His rebound numbers, not quite career low levels. His steals, they are at career low levels. Actually, that's not true. Se- second year, he was at 1.4. He's at 1.5 this year. So everything's down across the board. But over the last, let's look at last six games, 46% from the field. Now, we know he's a bad free throw shooter. We know that's going to impact you, 55% from the line on five attempts. Like, that's horrendous. You're punting free throws if you have Simmons generally anyway. But you expect mid to high 50s in field goals. And when he's down at 50 or 46%, getting under seven assists, like, it's, it's really hurting. I'm not expecting a huge uptick in usage. Embiid's going to be back on the weekend, and that hasn't actually really impacted Simmons all that much. Oh, actually, that's not true. To be fair, his usage has spiked a little bit. He's up to 24 and a half over the last six games. But when it comes with a big dip in efficiency to under 49% true shooting, it's overall hurting your team. So Simmons is a guy I think you can have a look at as a player that if that efficiency comes back up and he goes yeah, 57% from here on out, from the field, then that bumps his scoring. We know that. And maybe he gets a couple more assists. I wouldn't necessarily bank on it, but it's all about getting that field goal percentage back up, which is going to boost the scoring. So a two-cat bump. And I think you look at him as, you know, considering he hasn't been top 100 for the last month, like if you can get a top 80 guy and trade trade that in, I'd be I'd be very happy to do that and, and then hope for a top 50 run from Simmons from the rest of, for the rest of the way. The pencil, Harrison Barnes. Barnesy. Barnes is having a career year this year. He's still for fantasy? Oh, no, he's not. His best year was 16-17, 85th. He's fallen away from that. He was pushing the top 60 at one point. 
But what we, or what I said a lot at that time, is a lot of what he's doing efficiency-wise, it feels a little bit unsustainable, as well as his career highs in rebounds and assists that he was putting up. Now, those numbers have actually sustained pretty well. And even over these last two weeks, he's been able to maintain four assists and eight and a half rebounds, which again, is career-high type numbers. But what has happened is his usage has just disappeared. He, in his peak in Dallas in that 16-17 uh, season, 26 usage. Over the last eight games, 14 usage. That is a ridiculously low drop. He's averaging just 12 points, and he's shooting 45 and 86 from the line. But one of the big reasons why his value has dropped is that free throws, which are great, he's just not taking any. 2.8 attempts per game, like that's not having really any influence on that category. 45% from the field, including a putrid 24% from three, which is actually 24% from three since the All-Star break over the last 14 games. There is massive... Now, he's not a 40% three-point shooter. He's not going to blow us away and be top 50. But I feel all right about him being a top 100 guy and shooting better than 24% from three. And we know the single biggest ranking modifier category is one that's not even counted in fantasy, and it is three-point percentage. And you know why that is. And if you're new here, let me explain it. Because if you improve your three-point percentage, what you do is you improve your field goal percentage. That's one category. What you do is you improve your three-pointers made. That's two categories. And then if you're hitting more threes, you're scoring more points. So there's your third category. Your points category goes up. So three-point percentage, when you're way down in it, if you just have that spike back up to normal levels, you have a three-category increase, which can be a 20, 30 ranking spot rise. And that is always a guy to try and target who's having a what? And, and when you're looking at sell highs, if someone's shooting 50% from three, you go, holy shit, this is going to come down and it might be a 40 spot drop. And that is one of the key things, one of the most important lessons I can teach you about fantasy, not I'm teach you, like tell you about it in terms of fantasy basketball is watch for three point percentage trends because they influence so many different things in fantasy. Let's go to the next guy, Gordon Hayward, who's been really poor of late, 14 points over the last eight games, 42% from the field. Now this dude's shooting 47% on the season. But the other thing that's really wild is his 85% free throws have dropped down to 77%. And it's not that he's not hitting twos or not hitting threes because he's still hitting 42% of them. He can't hit free throws. That's a correctable issue. And he can't hit two-pointers, 41.9%. Why? Like, what, why can he hit these? Now, he has had issues with broken hands and fingers, and you could say, well, maybe that's part, part of it. Then why is he still hitting his threes at 42%? That doesn't necessarily marry in. It's probably just a weird blip in terms of the free throw shooting, in terms of the two-point shooting. He's also not getting any steals, under one per game over the last eight, seven steals in those eight games. The usage, which we thought would go up without LaMelo Ball, has dropped under 22%. That's not ideal. He's still rebounding well. He's still getting five assists, which has actually spiked without LaMelo, so that's an encouraging thing. But there are some clear indicators there that that usage should go up. The free throws should go up, maybe eight percentage points, maybe six percentage points, but it's it's got a real chance to go up. And the two-point percentage should drop from 41%. This is a guy who has been you know, 50s over 50 for like you know, four straight seasons in terms of two-point percentage, and he's hovering around 41 at the moment. So there is room for that to improve. And let's go to the last guy, the skater boy, Zach Levine. 13th ranked player this season. 44th ranked player the last two weeks, 134th the last week. Why? He's averaging 26.5 points over the last seven games. That's not a problem. He's hitting 93% of his free throws. That's not a problem. And he's doing it on four attempts. Not a problem. 49% from the field, still pretty bloody good. Like it's not as good as his 52% for the season. His two-pointers have dropped 40 or four percentage points. And that's fair. Like he was hitting 58% of his twos. And there was always going to be some level of uh, of drop off there for Levine, I expect. But he's still hitting his three. So why is it dropped off? Well, the assists have gone from almost five a game down to three a game. That has, that has married in with the arrival of Thaddeus Young and Thomas Sadoransky into the starting line. Now, Young is back out. I don't know how long that'll last. I reckon he might jump back in ahead of marketing. But with Sadoransky in there, who is a passer, a facilitator, a distributor, versus Kobe White, who's a chucker, uh, it's a bit of a big difference for Levine. Now, I, I, I don't have the splits here in front of me. I should look them up, actually, to see what Levine's assist rate is when he plays with those two guys. Actually, you know what? Let's go find that out now. All right, so now we're back. That didn't take any time at all. <laughs> um, I had a look. Uh, we're talking when he plays, when Zach Levine plays with Sadoransky, an assist rate of 5.3 assists per 100 possessions. When he's next to Kobe White, it's 6.8. There's, there's your difference. So with the expectation that maybe Levine doesn't start again, I think we have to reassess our expectations for Levine. 
Now, that doesn't mean that he's still not a bit of a buy low, but we do have to be wary of that factor. Everything else, like he's scoring well, he's dealing with an ankle injury, which again, people will get worried. What if the Bulls don't make it? Will they shut him down? Is he going to miss time? How serious is his ankle? It doesn't appear to be serious, but I wouldn't, you know, you're not paying top 13 value. You're not paying top 20 value. You're maybe paying top 35 if you can. That's where he, over the last month, he's the 34th ranked player. Um, and then maybe there is hope that they do reduce Sadoransky's minutes and try and work White back in there. That, that is a possibility too. So there is a little bit of upside in that. But just watch what you're giving up for Levine in that sort of scenario. Guys, this episode is brought to you by Locker Room. Locker Room is the first social audio platform made for sports fans. The app is free to download. And once you're in, you can talk with me, other fans, athletes, and insiders in real time about your favorite team or sport. I'll be hosting rooms for Locked On Fantasy Basketball once a week. And then you can join in on the conversation that you listen to here every day. It's the perfect place to start or join the conversations about the league. And you'll have a chance to chat with me. And you might even be featured on one of my Locked On Fantasy Basketball podcasts. So make sure to join me this week. I'll be hosting a room on Friday afternoon time yet to be determined. Go download the free Locker Room app now, currently available on all iOS devices. Sorry, Android guys. Be sure to create a profile, link your Twitter, and then join the NBA group for the latest league updates. Follow me at Josh Lloyd 48 to be notified when my room goes live. I know you won't want to miss it. I'm going to be live again on Friday at some point. I can't wait to hear everyone's thoughts on your, uh, your, your fantasy team and fantasy basketball in general. See you there. Locker Room is changing the way that we talk sports. All right, so let's move on now and talk about some points leagues by low. Points league by lows. That's better. Budrick Heald. Has not been a great season for Heald, I would say. He's averaging just 28 fantasy points per game. But over the last week, it's down to under 25 a game. The minutes are the same. The usage is the same. So why why are we down? Well, the, the scoring. That's it. 16.5 down to 14.5 points. Um, we know he's had some wild swings in efficiency. Over the last month, he's averaging 19 points per game, which is 32 fantasy points, but it's been a bit of a decline over the weeks after that. I don't know if the arrival of DeLon Wright does anything to impact people's thoughts on Heald, but that might be a way that you can slide in there and get him at a cheaper price. Now, again, you're not sending out a 28-point average player to get him, which is what he's currently averaging. You're trying to sneak it in for a 25er or a 26er based on the steady decline of his production over the last two weeks. I think that's something that's worth looking at. But he is that sort of mercurial type guy whose shooting goes all over the place. He's had two sub-20 scoring games in terms of fantasy in the last three games, which is uh, pretty important to note as well. So I think that he's worth looking at there. I also think it's worth looking at uh, the crucifix, Christian Wood, who since returning has not been the same guy. Now the thought would be Victor Oladipo has gone. They're going to give Wood the keys, yeah, so to speak. Hasn't really worked out that way. His usage is the same, but the 40 points that he's averaging per game this season, since he's returned, they're at 35. And he's playing still 31 minutes a night. Like he's playing 30 seconds fewer per game than his seasonal average. The blocks are down. The rebounds are down. The scoring is down. John Wall's taking a ton of shots. And the thing I think we've got to look at with Wood here is that people are fearful of a shutdown and you've got to play into people's fears. Wood's dealing with an ankle injury. He's still sore. Shutdown risk. Are they just going to shut him down because they're looking to tank? And and the thing you have to have in your head is they're bad even if Wood plays. Like I, I again, I don't think a guy like Christian Wood who's had so many or has failed in so many opportunities and hasn't been given these chances is just going to say, "Well, I'm fine. I'm sitting out for two months." Um, because you want a better draft pick where you maybe draft Evan Mobley to replace me. Like no way. Like and this, and this guy is not going to be quiet. This guy would not uh, take that on. It's all well and good for Al Horford in Oklahoma City to do that and to have that discussion together. And Al to say, "Fine, I'm happy with chilling. We know, I know who I am. I know where we're at. I know that I'm not in your plans." But Wood is in their plans, so he is going to want to be there. So I think that shutdown fear is bullshit. If he gets hurt again, then sure, he misses time because he's hurt. But you know, play into the fears of people just trying, yeah, I need a center. I need to take this, but don't aim for the guy who's, you don't trade for a guy that's averaging 40 points. That's not going to be a realistic uh, number for you to give up. Give a 35er. Like that's what he's been since he came back. Trade 35 points. Maybe you get 40, maybe you get 45 back. Who knows how things go, especially if John Wall does have some surgery. Talked about the skater boy already. His points league numbers are pretty similar. Under 30 points in the last three games. 35 points over the last seven. He's a 41-point guy over the course of the season. 
So the same uh, arguments that I used before still hold true. And we go on to Malcolm Brogdon, who is averaging 37.5 fantasy points per year. That's good for 43rd ranked player this season. But the last month, he's down to 33 fantasy points. That's, That's not enough. Why has he dropped off? Well, the assists have fallen away. And remember at the start of the season, Malcolm Brogdon was getting like eight assists and two steals. And I had him on some sell high shows because I said the assists, maybe they can stick, but <clears throat> it's never been that level. But the steals, he's never been this guy. Never been that guy. And the last 24 games, he is averaging 0.8 steals. So regression hits, and it hits hard, guys. And this is generally, you know, you're going to be wrong at times. Like I was wrong last year with Brandon Ingram. I said that the dude that shot two threes a game and hit him at 34% probably won't maintain being a 40% guy on uh, you know seven attempts. Or the 66% free throw shooter won't be an 85% free throw shooter. Turns out that was wrong. But if you bank on things regressing back to career levels with moderate improvement, you're going to go right most of the time. You're going to miss some, and it's going to look stupid. Like, again, I did with Brandon Ingram. And like, I may have looked this year with DeAndre Hunter taking his percentages up by 10 percentage points right across the board, which we won't know because he got hurt. And then, yeah, that's going to interrupt the season. But in general, when the, you see something that just looks, is absolutely wild and doesn't tie into anything this guy has done over a large sample size then you got to look at it and say, it's probably not going to stick. And that's sort of where we're at with Brogdon, whose steal numbers have come down. But in saying that, in saying all those things, I still think that we can get, look, he's averaging 4.2 assists over the last six games. Like, that's going to get better. I feel confident about saying that. He's averaging, he's got three steals in the last six games. And I don't expect him to be getting 12 steals in six games, but six or seven would be good. And I think he can do that. And that is enough that if he's giving 32 fantasy points over that time, you get an extra steal or an extra half a steal there. That's one and a half points. Bang. You get another uh, one or two assists. That's another two points. Bang. That's three and a half to four extra points. Your 32 goes to 36 and then you're laughing. And that's all it takes to swing 20 spots in fantasy points rankings. Half a steal, one and a half assists, and you're laughing. And I think that we can look at Brogdon as being that guy. And then lastly, let's talk Damo Lillard. Big Damo, who I'm a little worried about the impact that CJ McCollum is having. The last three games, his usage is at 27%. And remember, to begin this season, Lillard was not the high-end guy that he has been since McCollum got injured. He's 11th in points leagues, 47 fantasy points per game. But to begin this year, he wasn't a top 10 or top 15 or top 20 player when McCollum was firing. So there is a level of concern there for me with him. But the 39 fantasy points over the last three games, I feel better that that's going to increase, that we're going to see him back to 44 or 45 points. Um, and even over the last two weeks, he's averaging just under 42 fantasy points per game. He And, and the main reason, guys, and this is what is super important here, over the last seven games, he has one steal. Now, Lillard is not a high steals player. He's averaging about one steal per game. But one steal is very different to point one. And you may understand maths and understand that's a factor of 10 difference. So when you're talking, and and a steal is three points. So that 41.79 that he's averaging in his last seven games, if that becomes 44.79, then the top 20 goes to top 15. And then it doesn't even, then if you get the usage back from CJ, then then it's fine. That's an extra bonus. But, you know, averaging or getting one steal every seven games, it's not likely to continue. Not a good steals guy, but that is ridiculously low. And those numbers should be able to spike up, I would imagine. And I would hope. I am I am worried about the usage. I'm not worried about the steals going back to normal levels. Built Bar. We've been telling you about Built Bar, the best tasting protein bar on the market for a while now. Built Bar is the amazing low calorie, low sugar, high protein, high fiber, amazing tasting protein bar with 100% chocolate on all bars. And now it's time to find out which Built Bar is the best. It is Built Bar Madness. Today's matchup, we've got cookies and cream versus cookie dough chunk. It's the cookie bowl. I'm going to go with cookies and cream. It is the goat flavor to me. And if you want to vote, go to builtbar.com or go to their Twitter account at bar underscore built. And remember to use the promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your next order. That is LOCKED15 to get 15% off your next order at builtbar.com. And check back to see who won today's matchup and who will become the best tasting protein bar. Guys, that'll do it for me today. Don't forget to subscribe, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on YouTube. Um, Hit the notification bell. Give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below, guys. We are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.